So, um, <laughs> uh, AKGs, right? Can't get enough of them. And you know your boy can't either. So um, we introduced to the family the AKG K241. Now, from what I know, the K241 was meant to... Okay, yeah. Um, it was meant to replace the K240. Now, um, it is one of those brothers that you just don't want to talk about. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a family member, yeah. It's a family member you don't want to mention because I guess it's like you only think about the important siblings. If, the, if I can even say something like that. Um, you think about the monitors, you think about the DFs, you think about the um, the, the ones who started it all, the sextets, and then you think about the the sad but true uh, fact that um, M220s and K240 Studios are like literally just um, <laughs> abominations. I say that jokingly, okay? They're, they're, they're beautiful headphones um, in the modern era sense, you know? But in the vintage sense... Um, you kind of start to think, why did K241s exist? Now, K241s, I think, were supposed to be an iteration. They fixed K240 sextets and some of their issues and problems. And I will say that these are a lot more resolving than sextets. And I think that's really all that needs to be said. Anything that has ever been said about sextets still apply, such as... Um, oh. <laughs> um, very detailed mids, very fast driver. Um, I got a better understanding of how these passive drivers work and how um, they're not, it's not a subwoofer. I think I had, I've always had the bat, like the, I had the wrong idea. Basically, these passive drivers are filters, they're filtration. And um, the reason, they're the reason why this semi open design, this, uh, this, this hybrid, uh, made sense. Now, um, sub bass and bass, of course, should be known that semi open and open back headphones are very horrible at trying to keep the bass in because it just bleeds out. There's nowhere for them to develop. Now, you can fix this by putting on leather pads, uh, which I've done with DFs. And uh, I think I, I guess I'll throw them in here for the sound test when we do it. Like, you can you can throw leather pads on these. These are a new pair of um, Dan Clark Audio angled um, Alpha Dog pads, um, lamb leather. Now, um, does it help with the bass and, and sub bass? Sadly, for these headphones, it doesn't. And I and it's the same thing that applied to the K two four one. There just there just was not a there wasn't a change in in bass. Um, the driver just was never meant to to do that. It was. It, it just wasn't meant to. Um, all that these filters do, okay, is they take away. It's like it's like a, um, it, it's a fill. It cuts out frequencies, um, or it lets frequencies pass through at a certain range. It's supposed to fix the bloominess around two hundred hertz. So um, that's basically what those um, six passive filters are doing, and uh, it's the same case in, in for these. It has those those those. You can see them right there. Um, I know that there's there's white, okay, but there's also black, which is the ones that you can't see straight through that a little film here. Um, and then the uh, driver itself is exposed, and it's a lot more reminiscent now of what is seen on DFs where it's uh, on DFs and in monitors, how the, the driver is kind of like open. It's not like covered with a plastic anymore. Um, it just pops out a, like a tiny bit, tiny bit. So um, I don't think you'll be able to see it through the, oh yeah, you can see it. Maybe, see it right there. A little, a little bit of a twinkle, huh? <laughs> yeah, that is not there on the sextets. So um, in that regard, that's like one of the bigger differences is the, the, the fact that that driver now is a lot more out there. Um, and then there's different uh, different materials used for the passive drivers or the filters. Um, basically the same, same thing nonetheless. I did the same cleaning on these, which means um, all of these headphones are, are the same, okay? There's no foam on the inside because it deteriorates over time. It's, it's just an AKG thing. <laughs> it's an every headphone it's a headphone problem okay um from the 80s the foams just take uh it just takes moisture it absorbs it and it uh, deteriorates um so just be aware when you're buying these vintage headphones that you'll probably have to clean them um 
something that they 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 were ahead of the game here apparently you know you know um in in AKG design um at headquarters they thought let's put red on right uh but then they failed and they put red on left as well i don't know <laughs> um you know good enough okay they tried um so uh that's also a difference on these and also um that's really that's pretty much it um it's pretty much it now what's really cool is that my model has a story and it's from the same seller who sold me the 900 uh the, the 990s the dt990 vintages to 600 ohm bare dynamics um and, and i say it's interesting and and stuff because uh you know if you watch that video you know why i'm a little bit biffed about my pair of 990 vintages um the cups are cracked the cable was um opposite like left sounds were coming out of the right ear so i had to re-solder it and it's the same thing for this okay now if you don't know what this is um it's an adapter for this five pin design that's very old the, the, no one uses that standard whatever the hell that standard even was and it transitions or uh it's, it adapts to this quarter inch now the thing that sucks is that this quarter inch had to be resoldered by somebody and i wonder if i wonder if you can guess who that was huh yeah that was me i had to resolder this um so uh that right there okay it's not going to be the clear the most clear thing sorry uh but uh i had to resolder this that's it. That's all I gotta say. I was really pissed. So, um, yeah, I, I, I honestly, I honestly wanted to hope that it was, it was, it was something I did wrong, you know, like wiring in terms of the Valhalla or for the Magni, but, um, it wasn't, it, it just wasn't. So with that out of the way, okay, it uses this, this plug. I don't know if a uh, later model started to, you know, just, uh, accept the fact that quarter inch would be the, um, the new standard. Uh, but, um, the sextets also had th that plug, so you know that these are old. Now, again, there's not really a difference. Um, I know that later models of the sextets came with AKG, um, like this. Just it's literally this this band and it's silver. It's literally this band, <laughs> if I were to be honest. Um, slapped on a sextet or on the um, the four forty ones. Now, um, luckily enough, these are such early designs um that's um it's not too early but i mean the early designs where they just have the 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 cut dotted um head straps so that's our headband so that's pretty cool um besides that though uh, i think that's it for build that's really it for build the, the pads were the same um same pads as they would have been on um on the sextets and the monitors and so on um but I put uh, these like very cheap velour pads on, which actually work really well for these apparently. Um, so I just kept them. So um, the sounds are going to be different when we play them through. They will, sadly. Uh, but uh, they will also be um, um, quieter. Now the reason for this is that these headphones are super duper hungry. I can't get these to the negative 10 standard that I want. Um, so um, there might be distortion in the bass, I think. Uh, on the tubes, which are actually what we're going to run these through. I don't get enough power and loudness out of the Magni 3 when I plug these in there. So they don't they don't work. So let's start with the sex sets first. Again, bare dynamic pads are on these, um, which I always highly recommend. And uh, just know that the K241s, you can put the bare dynamic pads on them as well. I'm just lazy, okay? Um, it takes a while to put those pads on. And I know I'm not going to leave them on this so it's just not gonna do it so um yeah that's really all i gotta say about these is that uh, yeah the build is literally the same thing a few little touches and changes here and there in terms of uh that but um that what am i saying <laughs> like in terms of the build and also in terms of the material you used and a little bit of the design philosophy changing um but um honestly besides the tunes the, the small tuning to these um they virtually are the same headphone uh but uh it is very it is actually you know like i have to be honest it is very noticeable that these are not as mid forward like biting uh, at your ears uh, for vocals uh or for guitars in a mix and, and they're definitely a lot more resolving it doesn't feel as 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 um it doesn't feel as stagnated stagnated um, separate um i don't know how to how to word that but it's just it's just the, the high range gets so 
breaks apart. It's kind of brittle. Um, it's sort of, it's sort of not, it's not smooth as we transition back to the mids. So yeah, so, so have you guys listen to that. So we will not do the HD 600 test thing because we're just going to compare K240s directly to K241. And then from K241, we go to DFs. Okay. So give a listen. Um, to the track, it's uh, A Night Alone. If I remember to plug the headphones in. <laughs> okay, I think that... Uh, oh, cables on my desk, dude. It's not fun. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll plug them through the tubes. So, we're running off the Valhalla 2, and it's using a Modi 2 deck. So, um, okay, now you guys can take a listen. I'm so bad at this. Uh, That's that. So, um, yeah, no, it's, what, what do I say, right? Like, what do I say after this? Um, two for ones. Don't sleep on these because, um, they, they, sh they really do show you. I think, I think you can, I think you can really hear it. Like, I know that the condenser microphones that are on the mini DSP here's are, um, they're going to be a lot more better for measuring. They will be, but, but they ultimately are going to suffer with brighter sounds. That's just, I think the nature of mics. Uh, when it comes to condenser microphones, is um, they can it can be kind of jarring, uh, because there's a lot of headphones I've thrown on the mini DSP here so far that have been um, they're brighter than they actually are to my ears. Now I wonder if it's um, again I'm still a newbie, so doing this is weird, uh, but um, they're they're a lot brighter than than what they really are. Now, uh, sad truth is is that the, <laughs> the sex sets I think are pretty true on these um. Like they, they're not supposed to be piercing, okay? And I haven't changed the I haven't changed the volume knob on the Valhalla. It stayed the same the entire way through. We threw these on tubes to even give them a chance. And um, sadly, I think the tube, yeah, the tube amp I have is not 
it's not the most uh, tubey of them out there. So um, it's kind of neutral. Uh, so, uh, you know, between the three headphones, though, okay, when we when we look back, uh, even more AKGs, because I can't stop talking about AKGs, right? I uh, just... <laughs> Sextets will forever still be detail-heavy monsters in the mid-range, and I think that will never, that will never change. Um, just all things considered for their age. But damn, if you can find a K241, you got yourself something that's a bit more resolving, and I think that um, for some people that don't like that crunchy... Um, high end that can start to sound um, uncontrolled. Um, you may, you may, you may want to look for these instead. Um, that's just how I feel. I feel, I feel a lot more calm with these. I feel more on edge with these, um, with with the K two forties, the sextets. More on edge, more lax with the K two four one. I think that um, they did a good job. And the DFs, <laughs> uh, you forget you forget that there's there's different pads on like all three of them. I should have just put same pads, but I mean honestly, I think there's no other better pad combo than putting the Dan Clark Audio angle pads on these. Like I mean, just throw the angle pads on everything. At this point, that's what I'm gonna maybe do, because uh, I want to put these actually on the <laughs> on the DT48s um, for fun, but. The DFs, I think, are a lot closer to the to the two four one um, than these are closer to a studio or to the to the monitors, even to the sextets. You know, I feel like I feel like um, I feel like the K two four one is a lot closer to the DFs, and um, the DFs follow a design that uh, would be that would just be the AKG design, the K uh, the K two four whatever. Okay. The K2, whatever. Um, that would be the 200 series um, philosophy would be the DFs um, or after the K241s. Um, but yeah, the the lack of sub-bass ability or, or capability and uh, the, the lack of bass thereof, uh, thereof, um, just in general, no bass, um, does not take away from impact. There's some some impact which is weird, but it's it feels nice hearing that that uh, what whatever kind of bass these can reproduce, but specifically in the mid range, the high range that uh, let these shine, and um, it's exactly what these were designed for. Which I'll never forget is it's designed for vocals, it's designed for monitoring, uh, for for musical ap application, and um, they they never failed um, to succeed in that. So yeah, thanks for watching. This is a little bit longer than normal. Um, it's a little different than normal. But yeah, between these three headphones, honestly, these are these are kind of a kind of a winner for me. Um, if you can't find the rare DFs, which um, these are being coming more common now, um, maybe maybe it's just because of the time that I started looking on eBay. But um, there's a lot more DFs being listed than uh, than uh, K two four ones I think right now. So. Look on eBay, try to look for either one of these pairs, and I think you'll be happy. Uh, but um, yeah, sex stats, man. Oh, sex stats. Take care, be safe. I'm happy I got the sound out there. That's all I could ever have wanted. So, bye-byes.